Good evening, everyone. Uh, this, uh, coming to you live from Santa Fe, New Mexico. This is our take two. We had a little bit of an internet connection problem on our first try. Uh, I'm Scott Harrison, Artistic Director of Ironweed Productions, and I want to welcome you to our 10th episode of Talking Theater Live. Oh, hi, Glenn Crayley just joined in. Um, I'm very honored and delighted to have as my guest this evening, Santa Fe actor, director, and teacher, Virginia Hallsmith. Virginia, thank you and welcome. Thank you. Um, for, we also have, this is exciting, we have a, a studio audience here with us. We've never had that before. We're here at the Montecito, so we have a few folks here, uh, friends of Virginia's, who are watching it with us. So welcome to you all, and welcome to all of you um, watching us. <clears throat> I just briefly want to say for anyone watching us for the first time, Talking Theater Live is a series of half-hour conversations between myself and Santa Fe theater artists, sharing stories about their experiences in the theater, and what led them to creating theater in Santa Fe. So uh, Virginia, just wanted to uh, get started. Actually, uh, we were just talking about this, and I was thinking this morning, it's been uh, almost exactly 15 years ago that you and I worked together for the first time. Was that Anna Christie? Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. So that was 2003. Uh, that was directed, <coughs> directed by David Olson. Um, theater work. At, at theater work. Yeah. And that was our first time working together. I had actually, uh, my wife and I had just moved here um, the previous fall. Um, and then most recently, uh, hard to believe time's gone by as quickly as it has, but uh, it's been six years ago since we worked on, uh, on our town together. So. Uh -huh. Lord. Um, time flies. <laughs> yes, right. Uh, I just, uh, Virginia, I just thought I'd start uh, from the beginning. And you uh, spent your childhood in Santa Fe? Is that Were you born in Santa no, Fe? No, I was born in Kansas City, Missouri. And mother, escaping a bad divorce, popped me into a car and we drove to New Mexico where I thought I had been shipped to Mars. <laughs> People lived in mud houses. Nobody spoke English. Food took the top of your head off. <laughs> I was not enchanted. <laughs> now, what brought your mom to New Mexico? Had she she'd been come. Before? She'd come one summer, and she remembered it. And she met the man who became my stepfather, and they settled down here for the remainder of her life. How oh, hard! And now, how, how old were you when you seven seven years old? Mm -hmm. So you started second grade here in... At Miss Turley's one-room schoolhouse, and nobody remembers it. Now, where where was that? Well, here's Gormley, which uh, wasn't, wasn't Woodgar, and there was a little street, and there was Miss Turley's. Wow. Well, you know, a thousand years ago, and I say Miss Turley's, and everybody goes, duh. <laughs> <laughs> Now, had, <clears throat> and did you, um, were you kind of captured by make-believe imagination when you were little? I mean, was your kind of interest in, in acting and playing I'm going to tell you a story. Um, during the war, California, my family was there. Mm -hmm. I was graduate, I was in the end of my junior year, and mother came up to me one day and said, well, dear, we need to talk about your future. Ha ha. I said, what do you mean? Ha ha. Mother said, well, you've been acting since you were that high. I said, so? Mother said, I said, oh, you mean everybody doesn't know what they want to be when they, when they grow up? Oh, wow. So that's the background. So she, so your mother encouraged you then to... Well, willy-nilly. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't think she, if she'd had her choice, she would have rather had me be a member of the uh, Junior League uh -huh. and married and right. children, but uh, it seemed to be taken out of her hands. Right, right, right. Well, I was a... acting! <laughs> Do you have like a first uh, memory? Is like that your earliest memory of when you just were you pretended you were someone else, or you uh... beggar on horseback, Iowa? <clears throat> My final speech was. I noticed the difference the minute I met Arthur again, and I heard myself saying. 
I noticed the minute the diff, but I thought about it for a second, and my teacher said in my mind's eye, think, and then you start again. I noticed the minute the diff, <laughs> there was nothing for it. I noticed the minute the difference, I saw Arthur again. Well, and this was at the, you said the, the University, University of Iowa. Were you a theater major or? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we went to uh, the uh, Pasadena Playhouse to talk to Miss White because mother had definite ideas about her daughter getting a broad education with a stress on drama. Uh -huh. And Miss White said, well, at that time, Yale didn't take women. Huh thousand years ago <laughs> okay and Miss White said well I would recommend the University of Iowa and I heard my mother say Iowa isn't that where the tall corn grows and Miss White drew herself up and she said Iowa is 92 percent literate which shut mother up wow. and sent me to Iowa I'll be darned I think it still is. Oh, I think that's so cool, though, that your mom encur I mean, encouraged well, your she interest. She kind of really didn't have much choice. Yeah, yeah. My father, they were long since divorced, yeah. uh, always spoke of his daughter as the teacher. We never mentioned theater. Uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, was there ever a point where he kind of... He never accepted? saw me act. Is that right? Gosh, now, his laws. That's right. That's right. <laughs> when you were at uh, University of Iowa, did you was your kind of dream then to be an act, to be a professional actor? There was or? never any question. Oh gosh. Never, 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 never. I mean, I, I, as I said in that first little bit, all, and doesn't everybody want know what they want to do? And doesn't they all want to act? Right. And then, of course, when I went to New York <clears throat> in 1949, the odds were 92% unemployed, which should have told me something, but didn't. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you worked off Broadway, right, in, yeah. in New York? Yeah. yeah. Was... Circle in the Square a couple of times. Oh, my gosh. Right. And what was New York? Because I know I, my, my wife and I lived in New York, you know, in the in the late '90s, and we left in 2002. What what was New York like as a, to be an actor in in 1949? Well, it didn't matter that you didn't have two nickels to rub together, mm. and we were all young, and we were all starstruck, and we all went to the theater by standing outside until the first intermission, and waiting till. We saw how many seats were empty, and then running in oh and sitting gosh. down. I saw more second acts. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the good part. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That Did, was that was New York. Gosh. Down. <clears throat> this is down Sheridan Square uh -huh. before it moved, where Circle Square moved. And what were was there a kind of a were there any kind of seminal uh, play exper you know, experiences that you know just kind of. Uh, powerhouse kind Thousands. of musical or yeah, yeah you know I've been in, in what 70 60 70 shows so yeah, yeah. I even had to go back and make a list because I couldn't remember all the titles do you remember your first what what your first uh, professional production was <sighs> yeah um, <clears throat> I I got to new. I, I'd done a couple. Uh, I'd been in stock. I got my equity card. I had been doing off Broadway, and my father was giving me the princely sum of a hundred dollars a month, which was fine in those days. And then Dad called me, and he said, "Well, I've been talking to a, a well-known actor. Uh, he was out in California at the time, and he, and he says if you haven't made it in two years, you aren't going to make it. So I'm stopping your allowance." <laughs> I said, Dad, give me six weeks to learn a trade. <laughs> so I learned speed writing and typing, and I began working at the uh, William Morris Agency. Oh, gosh. And then, another long story, I got 
into teaching. Uh -huh. My stepfather's younger brother was the director of a small school in Williamstown, which is still there. And, um, and that's the Buxton School? Buxton School. So I, for the little local newspaper, I drove around and saw theater. And I went up to Dorset a number of times and I was just enchanted. And uh, one day the phone rang and it was Pat Carmichael of Dorset. And she said, uh, how about uh, taking on a small part in one of the shows we're doing? I said, what makes you think I can still act? It had been 15 years. Yeah. She said, well, we'll take a chance. So I did Hay Fever, yeah. Noel Cowards. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. <laughs> and that was the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So after, so when I, when I settled in at Buxton, yeah, because I stayed there 35 years, I would work my head off. I did 300 productions. Mm. But in the summertime, I do summer stock. Oh, nice. So it evened out. Nice. I love doing so. I did summer stock two summers at this little theater in uh, Finley, Ohio, and I just, I loved it. Just There's like, nothing like it. Yeah, though. and just juxtaposing such different characters and plays in just such a short time. Yeah. Wow. Now, where did you, and so did you do summer stock in, in Massachusetts then? Or? I did Massachusetts, New York, uh, yeah, Williamstown, I did a couple of shows. Oh, I was trying to, and of course those titles have gone right out of my head. Uh, oh, I was wherever I could get a job. Mm -hmm. Didn't make any difference. Yeah, yeah. You know. Now you so at uh, at Buxton, then you uh, you directed and produced. When did you first get interested in directing? I mean, it fell on me rather than the reverse. Oh, it was the only course I didn't take at Iowa. Interesting. <laughs> so now when you went to Buxton, did you were just were you expected to you're gonna direct a certain number of shows? I inherited it from our founder, who very generously <clears throat> stepped aside uh -huh. and said take over the drama department. So I was drama. Yeah. I made the costumes, I designed the sets, I made the silk screens, I directed over it well, it was well over three hundred shows. Wow. Well, I, with teenagers I found that after they got over, why don't we do Bye Bye Birdie, <laughs> that we were not going to spend time on anything that demanded less of them. So we did Murder in the Cathedral. We did uh, shows like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have any other, I know you directed uh, just numerous play. Do you have any that kind of rise to this, the few that were your favorite experiences or? We were doing, um, oh, what's the, Good Woman of Setsuan. And uh, my, the, my boss, my hmm. uncle said, the orchestra people, because once a year, the entire school went on the road hmm. with an all school play, me. <laughs> um, he said, the, you know, the, the orchestra people should get a chance. So I said, sure. So one boy stepped forward and I said, who are you, Matt? Okay, Matt. I said, well, you can be part of the shelves in this uh, uh, Chinese play. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was safe. He immediately went to sleep. <laughs> oh no, oh no. <laughs> After the show was over, <laughs> I came up to him and I said, Matthew, you will never be on my stage again. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It didn't even slow him down. He became, he did uh, Murder in the Cathedral. He was Beckett. He was Bottom in Midsummer Night's Dream. I, he was a magnificent actor. That's wonderful. And he went to uh, SUNY Purchase. Uh -huh. Purchase. And in two years, he was diagnosed with brain tumor, and in three years, he was dead. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And I still miss him. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that one. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but there are a million stories, of course. Yeah. yeah. Why don't we do my library? Right. 
right. Why don't we do a musical? I'll tell you why we don't do musicals. One, we don't have the sets because Broadway made the musical, mm -hmm. created the musical. Yeah. We didn't. We we had uh, drapes that we put on mm. poles that we could change the set around when we went on the road. We don't have the singer. And I am not going to have you knock yourselves out learning words that will last you about a week and have no significance. Mm -hmm. I want you to, to think about these parts and, and to live them and grow them. And you'd see kids saying, hey, you know, yeah, this guy, this guy is, is we think alike. Oh. It's opening. You know, at their teens, they they range from three to thirty, and and they're so lost, they don't know who the hell they are, and this gives them a direction, and a sense of fulfillment. Ah, uh, yeah, nothing like it. Gosh, yeah, yeah, and I'm in touch with large numbers of them that's still. Great. That's great. Oh yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know. I mean, for me, that's just the. Uh, how powerful a uh, wonderful teacher can be. I mean, that's when I was in college. I I, I wasn't even interested in theater, and I took a um, I had to take a general studies class for the arts. And uh -huh. So I just I happened you know, on a whim to take theater, <clears throat> and I had this wonderful teacher, Alan Lindrup, um, who just um, really inspired me that that like this is something I want to I want to do more of and learn more about. You know, and I I just think well if if I hadn't had him. You know what no, different wonder. path would I have taken? Right. Well, I had uh, a birthday recently, and a half dozen of people, ex students of mine, um, came to see me, and and they were so funny because they come up. In the first place, I was expecting, remember, eighteen years old, you know, and this voice was, "Hi, Virginia," <laughs> <laughs> and this is my daughter and my granddaughter, you know. I'm adjusting my memory. Right, right, right. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then they'd say, Virginia, do you remember the day you said da 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 da? I'd say, no. <laughs> they said, well, you did, you did. And you, do you remember the day when you did this? this, this, this? No. <laughs> they did in spades. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so great that you keep in touch with. Oh, a lot of them. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And they say, Virginia, why don't you encourage us to go on in theater? Mm -hmm. I say, you're standing on a very high building. I should be saying, jump. Mm -hmm. I'm out of my, if you want to make it, you're going to try and make it, no matter what I say. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be because I'm behind you going saying, go ahead, darling. You're going to be just wonderful in this part. Mm -hmm. And a few of them have that's true, yeah. made it, and that's all right. Yeah. But uh, I'm certainly not going to encourage people, you know, with stars in their eyes right. that they're going to learn, you know, be in millions of movies and plays. Yeah. It's still not. It's still a rugged, rugged business. Yeah. 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 Even with the advent of TV and everything else. Right. Yeah. 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 So. Well, it's interesting all the different areas that you know that doing theater feeds into even oh. if you don't pursue it whether it's just your 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 confidence or, or an interest in history or art or mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. uh psychology um i was a psychology major in uh, in school and so i just am always fascinated about all those you know things we learn and how that feeds in right right theater. right all right my kids kids I will always think of them that way. Yeah. The I'd say 70, 80% of them go into what I call service. And that's because of the Buxton training. Hmm. To help others, to reach out to others. You know, a very, very high percentage. So is that that's part of kind of the philosophy of the school? Yeah. Well, it was an unspoken thing. Uh -huh. You did for others. And you received gratification from from it, and they did. You no, know, Buxton has always been built that way. That's great. Yeah, you know, 
It's not a very big school. It was only 50 when I joined it in 58. And it's leveled off at 90. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> and now what's and now? So it was 35 years you were there. What brought you back to Santa Fe? I finally... I, I was burned out at Ian Buxton because I'd done, you know, hundreds and hundreds of shows. And I found myself being short with the kids and worse, sarcastic. Hmm. This hmm. is not something you ever want to do and it's, sometimes it's irresistible. And we had a very small board of trustees. We didn't have two pennies. We did all our own work. Hmm. Um, we didn't have maids or anything like that. Anyway, the board of trustees sat down and worked out a retirement plan for the present teachers. And there, and then there was my uncle, his wife, our black cook, and me, who had been there over 30 years. So they figured out if they put us in the, in the roster we would get maybe $3,000 a, a year. Mm -hmm. So they backed up our pay as if we had belonged in the, in the, uh, in the group at, as we really had for the 35 years. And I suddenly realized I can leave. I can go. Gosh, yeah. What an incredibly generous. Yeah. So the four of us did. Yeah. Actually, my my uh, uncle stayed on hmm. uh, for another ten years. So. Gosh, that is very generous. Yeah, it was. It's kind of remarkable. Yeah. No, I was just. I had decided that I was going to die in harness, and there was nothing for it, and I was not liking myself very much, and so when I knew I could leave, I heard a little voice saying. I want to go home. Mm. What? Gosh. I had no idea that this was reaching out to me. So back I came. Yeah. <laughs> to find a much larger city than yeah. I had left. Now you had left in um, like what? 40s. The 40s. Well, no. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, we went out to California during the war, but came back. Mm -hmm. And then I went straight on into college. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> and Santa Fe was sixteen thousand. Oh, at that time, when we came. yeah. Talk about small town. Gosh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you've seen it. I mean, just from your as a child, and then coming back, it's incredible. Well, in the seventies, apparently there was this huge boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, when you came back, what when what was kind of your first? Uh, experience in the theater back in Santa Fe? I went to the Santa Fe Playhouse and I immediately got into a play. I wish I could remember the name of that woman. I can't. Anyway, I I suddenly was, I, I and I'd been told that Santa Fe had very, 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 very little theater and mm -hmm. whatever theater it was doing was all uphill, just clawing, the, which is true, mm -hmm. still true. Mm -hmm. For an arts city, mm -hmm. we have damn little theater and it struggled. Anyway, uh, that's how I got started. And then very, very quickly after that, I think I met David Olson mm -hmm. and became a member of Theater World. Theater World. Yeah. And I did 20 some odd shows for him. Mm -hmm. and, and then whenever a show, an opening showed up, I was there. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything. Yeah. The only time I had questioned it was after the third show when David had cast me as a man. I thought, David, are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He was yeah. a magnificent director. Yeah. I mean, I met uh, him. We, my wife and I came out uh, in April of 2002 and we were thinking about, you know, potentially moving here and 
um, you know, but we we were there were some, we were looked at for Burlington, Vermont, and um, right. that was another place we looked at. But we came out here and um, and I ended up I, I met him. Uh, I got in touch with him. I met him over at the theater. They were putting together um, the Tempest. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, he was just he was so generous, and he said if you come back, you know, if you do move here, please get in touch with me. And we moved here, and I got in touch with him, and he said. You know, we're getting ready to do this play, The Rainmaker. You know, you'd love mm -hmm. to have. And anyway, right. I, I'm really grateful to him for um, just so many opportunities, and then just the beautiful theater that he's that he's done. No, well, it was very, very exciting working with him. Yeah, I have to. I have to go back a little bit. Um, in Iowa, I was doing um, Barrett's of Wimpole Street, and E. C. Maybe, who was the head of the drama department, a large man. With Popeyes came into the theater and uh, was watching rehearsal and during one of the pauses I heard EC maybe say that girl will never get on the stage listen to her voice <laughs> and I went home and I cried uh, yeah. and then I got mad yeah. because I couldn't understand you know, I used to talk like this all the time because I had a Middle Western twang and my mother was always saying, Virginia, lower your voice. And I'd say, what? What's the matter? <laughs> so and I talk like things? that all the time. <laughs> so, I, so I just took hold of the voice. Right. <laughs> Rediscovered the... the uh, Got down there yeah. for long. Yeah, yeah. But it, it was pretty horrifying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, David did, never heard that voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you have a, of the theater work shows? Did you have a, a favorite? Oh, so oh, well, Moon. Mm. Uh, the first one was. I, I keep going out of my head. We were Spanish women. True story came to, um, the, the the states to get our uh, get jobs. And uh, I was playing with, oh, who was the actress here? Now dead. Lois. Lois. Oh, Lois Escola, yeah. Lois Escola. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were in that together. Gosh, yeah. And that was just, that was a real eye-opener, because I don't know when I worked so hard. Oh, uh-huh. Because I really... This was an, uh, an alien woman to me, mm -hmm. and it was so exciting to get under her skin, and uh, and live that part. Mm. But there have been a number of them, mm. and, and uh, of course, the most recent one, of course, my my, my swan song, I think, is uh, Mad Woman of the Shire. Mm -hmm. You're wonderful in that. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, that was terrific. Well, well, Barbara Hatch, I tried out for a very similar part that I that I do very easily you know our Miss Brooks that kind of dry mm -hmm. straight out to the audience kind of thing mm -hmm. I can do that with my hands tied behind my back <laughs> and she so she said would you care to try Gabrielle if anybody knows this show Gabrielle is the flake to end all flakes <laughs> <laughs> and I said Gabrielle <laughs> Come on. She, Barbara said, well, I kind of see you in that part. And I go, well, what the hell? And I don't know when I had such a good you time. You were fantastic in that. I had such fun. Yeah, you were, that was such a wonderful <laughs> show. <laughs> well, I well, that's, that's uh, I, I love that uh, experience when you're kind of given an opportunity to play a role that you don't really, you're not really thinking of, and then suddenly you just have a, just have an absolute blast. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, that's great. No, it's a favorite show of mine, and I had been the Mad Woman in a uh, upstate New York show, mm -hmm. in which I was not very good. I hated to admit it, but I was not yeah. at my best. Yeah. It's one of those ones that didn't quite click. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's great that you got to revisit it again. Yes. Gabrielle, <laughs> what a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, Virginia, I just I wanted to just uh, finish off with one one final question here. I just I'm always interested in um, this from people. Is there any um, 
kind of memory that you have or, or experience that you have like when you're acting on stage where you just feel like, ah, oh, this is why I this is why I do it. Like this is why I love it so much. Or Not for, consciously. Oh, interesting. No, it just it, oh, it's, interesting. it's through all of me. Yeah. It's I I mean I am an actress. Mm -hmm. And you there you are and you can't get away from it. Mm -hmm. There's no question about, you know, I lose myself in the part. I say to everybody, you lose yourself in the part, you're going to lose yourself right out of the part. They, that whole idea. Right. No, it's like um, I'm in control. Mm -hmm. These are the reins and these are the parts, but I'm in control. And you never lose sight of that. Or should you? Because you're dipping into that's that's the, the well of what you, ha what you are. Right. And that's what you dip from to play all of these parts, but you never lose that side. Right. And I always felt that, and I've tried to teach that to my kids. I say, you don't lose yourself in the parts. Yeah. yeah. And and you want to, and and it's like putting on a, a, a an outfit that's that's alien to you, and as you as you try the sleeves. It becomes more and more comfortable mm -hmm. until it's time to go on stage, and then you're wearing it. Right. But it's always in control. Yeah. That's a great. That's a great lesson. Yeah. A great yeah. way of putting it. Right. Oh. Well, Virginia, I'm so grateful for this time. This has well, just been, been very kind. Really wonderful. <laughs> I just loved hearing your just your stories and your your recollections and. Um, and thank you all uh, for being here. It was wonderful to have the audience here. And thank you all uh, very much for joining us. Um, again, we uh, post these interviews on our Facebook page, which is Ironweed Productions. Uh, so I will post this uh, and people can watch it if you didn't see it live or you can watch it again. We'll also uh, list what uh, upcoming interviews we have on our Ironweed Productions Facebook page as well. So please like us and follow us on Facebook. But uh, again, thank you all very much for joining us tonight. Thank you again thank very you much, all. Virginia. And thank you Bless all. Bless you. And good Bless evening. you. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> Made it all possible.